Good afternoon, everyone. We're going to call this afternoon's meeting of the Senate Committee on Legislative Operations and Elections to order. Uh, Madam Secretary, if you'd please note that uh, Senator Daly, Senator Krasner, and I are present, and please excuse uh, the Majority Leader and the Minority Leader. I do want to ask everyone here in Carson City uh, or those joining by video conference, those listening over the internet and down at the Sawyer Building, please silence your electronic devices. If you wish to testify, please sign in at the table by the door. Please provide a business card to our committee secretary uh, if you have one. For those joining online, please be sure to mute your microphone when you're not speaking to minimize any background noise. Uh, when testifying, please turn on the microphone, clearly state your name, and if you're representing an organization, please state which organization you're representing. Please turn the microphone off each time you're speaking. Uh, we understand that here in the Legislative Operations Elections Committee, we do hear bills that sometimes raise a lot of passions between people, but we do expect everyone testifying to uh, have courtesy and respect for everyone else, regardless of whether you agree or disagree with their opinion. Committee members will be using their laptops to view handouts on Nellis, other documents. Please do not view this as a sign of disrespect or inattention. Uh, we will take public comment at the end of the meeting. And uh, with that, we will go to our first item on the agenda. We will hear SJR 7 of the 81st session. And I see we have Senator Dondera Loop and Assemblyman Kasama. So we'll open that hearing. Thank you for being here today. Thank you uh, so much, Chair Orenshaw and committee members that um, were small but mighty on the Senate side. For the record, I am Marilyn Dondero Loop, representing Senate District 8 in Clark County, and I am pleased to be joined by my Assemblywoman, uh, Heidi Kasama, representing Senate Assembly District 2. We are jointly presenting Senate Joint Resolution 7, the Nevada Higher Ed Education Reform accountability and oversight amendment, which relates to the governance of the Nevada system of higher education. I am sure many of you are aware of the general contents of the bill, but nonetheless, I will start with the introductory comments and Assemblywoman Kasama will provide additional comments after me. As you know, the Nevada Constitution requires the legislature to provide for the establishment of the state university that is controlled by an elected board of regents whose duties are prescribed by law. Additionally, the Nevada Constitution provides that the board of regents to control and manage the affairs and funds of the state university under regulations established by law. Senate Joint Resolution proposes to remove the constitutional provisions that govern the election and duties of the Board of Regents and its control and management of the affairs and the funds of the State University. Instead, Senate Joint Resolution 7 would require the legislature to provide by law for the governance of the State University. I want to stress that SJR 7 does not repeal any existing statutory provisions governing the Board of Regents, including those that provide for the election of board members. However, it would make the board a statutory body whose structure, membership, powers, and duties are governed by those existing statutory provisions subject to any statutory changes made through the legislative process. There is no difference than many other boards set forth in the Nevada, Revi Nevada Revised Statutes. In the lead up to previous sessions, NSHE has sometimes tried to alter control or misrepresent information provided to policymakers, including the Nevada legislature. Obviously, this is unacceptable. Assemblywoman Kasama and I are encouraged by steps taken in recent years to correct many of these issues. Even so, as policymakers, we must be focused on building long-standing and stable systems of governance, not on individual personalities. We owe the citizens of Nevada a culture of accountability in all levels of government. This higher education system belongs to all Nevadans. It is our collective investment in the future of our state. As you recall, Assembly Joint Resolution 5 of the 79th session which proposed some of the same amendments as SJR 7, passed overwhelmingly in two legislative sessions, and we are grateful for the support of our colleagues. Senate Joint Resolution 7 removes the Board of Regents from the Nevada Constitution, but does not substantially change any higher education policy or procedure. 
It simply puts the Board of Regents and NCHI on par with every other on par with every other governing board and state agency created pursuant to statute. Chapter 396 of NRS would continue to exist and would still comprehensively govern the Board of Regents, and it still includes the requirement that the board is elected. The purpose of SJR 7 is twofold. One, it allows the legislature to exercise informed and measured governance of NCHI, and two, it allows more flexibility in considering reform proposals. Constitutional governance serves as an antiquated way to oversee higher education. The only region, reason the Board of Regents was placed in the Nevada Constitution in the first place was to access land grant funding under the Morrell Land Grant Act of 1862 without requiring action by the legislature. Ever since, we have included all the state's higher education governance and administration under this provision. Despite a laundry list of studies and analysis recommending the reorganization of the state's higher ed structure. It is our belief that the passage of SJR 7, we would see a resurgence of strong support for NGI and the Board of Regents. Assemblywoman Kasama and I pledge our support to work with the NGI administration and the board on behalf of the students, their families, and our communities to have the best system in our nation. Chair Orenshaw and committee members, this concludes my testimony, but I would like to turn it over uh, to Assemblywoman Kasama, who will provide further information about SJR 7. Thank you very much, Senator Dondero Loop. Assemblywoman Kasama, thank you for joining us today. Please go ahead. Thank you, thank you, Chair Orenshaw, and thank you, Senator Dondero Loop, who is my senator in my district. I represent Assembly District 2. And I am pleased to join uh, the Senator in my support for SJR 7. I would like to point out as set forth in the ballot question arguments for AJR 5 of the 2017 legislative session that although some other states have elected boards with constitutional status that control and manage particular institutions and programs of public higher education, Nevada is the only state in which a single elected board with constitutional status controls and manages the affairs and funds of the state's entire system of the public higher education. In past cases before the Nevada Supreme Court, the Board of Regents has even asserted that it is unique constitutional status. It gives it virtual autonomy and thus immunity from certain laws and policies enacted by the legislature. Based on legislative testimony, these assertions have given some people the impression that the board conducts itself as a fourth branch of government and that the board too often invokes its constitutional status as a shield against additional legislative oversight and accountability. Again, as Senator Don Darrell Loop noted, things have improved in recent years. Nonetheless, this general governance structure needs to change. A good example of this is how the university's budget is administered. While the Nevada Constitution requires the legislature to provide financial support for the operation of the state university, it also directs the board to control and manage the funds of the state university. There is a clear divide between the legislator's constitutional power to fund higher education and the, and the board's constitutional power to direct how those funds are actually spent. It gives the board virtually unparalleled power within state government to control and manage higher education spending without the same level of legislative oversight typically applied to other executive branch agencies. Another component of SGR 7 relates to the administration of federal land grant proceeds that are dedicated for the benefit of the state university. As a bit of background, the Nevada Constitution provides that funding derived by the state of Nevada under the Morrell Land Grant Act of 1862 must be invested in a separate fund and dedicated for the benefit of certain departments of the state university. If any amount of the separate fund is lost or misappropriated through neglect or any other reason, the state of Nevada must replace the lost or misappropriated amount so that the principle of the fund remains undiminished. Senate Joint Resolution 7 clarifies and modernizes existing provisions of the Nevada Constitution relating to the administration of these federal land grant proceeds. However, because the state of Nevada must administer those proceeds in the manner required by federal law, SGR 7 will not change the purpose or use of those proceeds. 
In closing, Senator Dondera Loop and I know that SGR 7 represents a second bite at the apple, if you will. This time, however, the language in SGR 7 is softened from AGR 5 and now calls for governance rather than control and management of the state university. Moreover, a biennial legislative audit of the state university and any other public institution of higher education established by the legislature is also included in SGR 7. This new gentler language and the audit provision will bring an enhanced level of transparency and trust that our system of higher education so desperately needs. With that, Chair Orenshaw and members of the committee, this concludes our presentation. We urge your support of SGR 7. This is just the beginning of a long process to bring this forward to the voters, and we hope you agree that all Nevadans should have an opportunity to consider SGR 7 in 2024. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Assemblyman Kasama, Senator Dondera Loop. Members, any questions either for the Senator or the Assembly person? Uh, Chair Orenshaw, we have uh, Gina Bon Jovi on the line at some point who would also like to testify. So I don't know where you want her to go in, but I just wanted to let you know. Thank you. Actually, if she's part of your presentation. I'm happy to have her speak now and support. Ms. Bon Jovi, if you're on the phone lines broadcasting, I'm not sure if she can be patched in or if, if she can, she's welcome to. Certainly. This. Thank you, Chair. Certainly. Thank you, Chair. Ms. Bon Jovi, if you're on the, the line, please press star nine to raise your hand. Chair, we have one caller on the line. However, they are not raising their hand. Well, then, um, if we don't have, if we're not sure that that's part, Ms. Bon Jovi's part of the presentation, perhaps we could uh, go to support here in Carson City. Then we'll go to support in at the Sawyer Building. We'll go to the phone lines. And if she does pop up, Ms. Bon Jovi, please raise your hand, and then we can try to patch you in. So we'll go to support. Unlo members, any questions? Senator Daly, Senator Krasner? We'll go to support here in Carson City. Thank you, Assemblywoman. Thank you, Senator. Anyone who'd like to speak in support of SJR 7? And I do want to remind members that since this came out of the 81st session of the Nevada Legislature, in order to go to the voters to propose an amendment to the Nevada Constitution, it would have to pass in the same form. So this, we could not amend this. It would need to pass in the same form. Please state your name for the record and proceed. Thank you, Chair and members of the committee. For the record, my name is Dylan Keith with the Vegas Chamber. Uh, we will have uh, our previous chairwoman of the board, Gina Bon Jovi, joining us uh, later during the uh, call-in testimony for support. But we'd be remiss if we did not also put our, ourselves on the record here in Carson City. Um, we strongly support SJR 7. We think that if this bill is to pass um, and come to the voters, it will move forward. We believe that it is essential to improve the Nevada system higher, of higher education. And we believe that it will be a strong benefit to all Nevadans, not just students. So thank you for, so much for your time. We urge your support. Thank you very much, Mr. Keith. Anyone else who wants to speak in support of Senate Joint Resolution 7 of the 81st session of the Nevada Legislature here in Carson City? Thank you for your patience. Please state your name for the record and proceed. Good evening. My name is John Nolan, J-O-H-N-N-O-L-A-N. I'm speaking in support of SGR 7. Um, I support everything um, that, that the previous people testifying stated. I think, you know, my support is not meant as an attack on any of the current regents. I believe most of the regents on the board now are new, and I think a lot of the problems came from regents who are no longer serving. Um, but I think that this is a good opportunity for a fresh start for higher education in Nevada. I think that accountability and transparency is very important. Um, but outside of that, I think this will address a larger cultural problem that's, you know, kind of worked its way down to all to to each of the institutions individually and I hope that this will allow a lot of people to realize the importance of establishing clear procedures and making sure rules are followed fairly but that's all I have to say thank you so much for the hard work to get this through two sessions and uh, I look forward to voting in favor of this in 2024 thank you very much thank you very much Mr. Nolan good afternoon sir please state your name for the record and proceed uh, Scott Huber, H-U-B-E-R, a faculty member within the Nevada System of Higher Education. Um, I've been in the system for 25 years, and during that time, 
uh, ostensibly the system is there to provide the needs of our students and also the state of Nevada. But after 25 years, I think that the system is really preoccupied with, with, with self-preservation, the control of the political discourse and management of the narrative, and I think that that's a fundamental problem that we have to uh, face. The governance system within the system, uh, within Nevada system of higher education does not function appropriately. Um, I have to believe that the regents run for these offices with the intent of helping as best they can, but too often they don't understand the complexities of the system and that allows them to be manipulated too often. I think that's a, a major problem. Um, I've seen too many presidential hiring committees that really serve the needs of the system and not the institutions. I've seen too many presidential evaluations that were corrupted. I've seen too many of them whitewashed. That does not serve the needs of the, sy uh, the system, nor does it really serve the needs of the institutions. Um, I think the general counsels don't serve the needs of the system well. Um, Bad apples are paid off and moved aside. They're not fired. I think that's a real problem. We were spending tens of thousands of dollars to pay off individuals when in fact they should be let go for malfeasance. Um, I think we're spending huge amounts of money for outside firms, law firms, to deal with situations that the system will not deal with or does not want to deal with for political reasons. I think the Title IX offices are illegitimate on some of these campuses. They're not functioning properly. And I think the funding formula is ill-conceived and I think it serves the few at the expense of the many. Um, the institutions have a, a significant number of problems because of this as well. And the presidents, in some cases, run their institutions like private fiefdoms. That's the expense of the students, the faculty, and all the resources that we, we are using. Hiring practices, particularly and, the and Professor colleges. Huber, I apologize. We are at two minutes, so if you could kind of wrap up your comments, I appreciate you being here. But I think we have a real challenge in front of us. I think we need to figure out what is broken and fix it. I think we need to leave alone what is functioning properly, which there is a major amount to that. So we really appreciate your efforts. Thank you. Thank you, Professor. Mm -hmm. Senator Hardy, thank you for being here. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, <clears throat> members of the committee. Uh, I, I know my client is here in Las Vegas, uh, Council for Better Nevada, to speak on this, but I wanted to avail myself the opportunity just to speak as a private citizen. I don't do that very often in this building. Uh, I, my experience on this goes back to 2005 when I was asked to chair an interim committee on higher education. And I learned at that point that it, it became pretty apparent to me that the founding fathers of Nevada the founders of the Nevada Constitution intended for the higher education to be a partnership between the Board of Regents and the legislature. And unfortunately, through the years, that sort of slipped away a little bit. I think this is absolutely necessary in order to get the legislature back in its rightful place as a co-pilot of that, of that organization and that effort. Um, it is a responsibility. Most of what you as legislators hear from, I mean, not most, but you hear a lot of, uh, from your constituents on education, K through 12 and higher education. Uh, we, the legislature controls the purse strings, the legis but the legislature should be more involved in the policy making. So I am here as a citizen in full support of AJR, SJR 7, and I wanna thank uh, Senator Don Darrell Loop as always and Assemblywoman Kasama for bringing this forward, thank you. Thank you very much for your testimony, Senator. Uh, not seeing anyone else here in Carson City. We'll go down to the Sawyer Building for testimony and support. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair and members of the committee. Thank you for the opportunity to come before all of you today. My name is Maureen Schaefer, and I represent the Council for a Better Nevada. Uh, we thank Senator Dondero and Assemblywoman Kasama for the sponsorship of this bill and testify in support of SGR 7. I'd also like to thank the thoughtful comments of my colleagues who came before in testimony in support of this bill. 
Our existing, our existing NCHI Board of Regent framework and governance structure, while appropriately supporting the state for many decades in the state's founding phase, has been outgrown by a Nevada with far more diverse, complex, and advanced educational requirements for our state students to adequately compete within the state's growing competitive economic environment here and increasingly anywhere in the world. There have been many unintended consequences over time of not changing the system from its original 1865 constitutional structure to keep up with an evolving, aspiring, and innovative Nevada. The establishment of the Board of Regents in the Constitution simply allowed Nevada to access the Morrill Act's land grant resources. Since that time, there's been a natural inclination for the state to place all of its growing higher education assets into this original structure that was never meant to hold such a, such a diverse entity, resulting in the most centralized higher education system in the country, a single board, one funding stream, and a bloated administrative bureaucracy, especially when compared to other similar states like Virginia, the size of Nevada, who has 70 employees in its higher education office that runs 49 academic higher institution, higher, higher education academic institutions compared to our system where we fund approximately 270 employees for our 11 institutions. Times have changed in higher education. However, Nevada has failed to keep up and we continue to pay for it. Secondly, over the years, this autonomous constitutional claim we make has been utilized by NCHI leaders to criticize and even block genuine, thoughtful, and progressive legislative efforts on your part to check, oversee, and reform various aspects of the system on behalf of our citizenry and our economy, preventing you, the legislature, and we, the business and philanthropic community, an ability to keep pace with Nevada's own community and economic development evolution and growing higher education needs as a state. This reality continues while more broadly international institutions now have cracked the top 20 in higher education school rankings that have always been dominated by U.S. universities. Simultaneously, birth rates are beginning to decline for the first time in decades, causing universities to scramble and compete for university students across the U.S. and world more than ever before. We in Nevada must upgrade and update to stay relevant or worse, risk continuing to fall further behind. Ms. Schaefer, Third, thank you the for current your constitutional I, protection. Ms. Schaefer, I apologize. We're I'm getting sorry. two minutes. If you could kind of wrap it up. Appreciate your testimony. We're just trying to keep everyone to two minutes. I per will. Speaker. I will. We need to continue this positive momentum for progress like all of you did with AB 416 last session with the first audit of ENCHI, which found um, many multiple failings of the financial systems and controls. We really um, hope you will support the passage of SJR 7. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Schaefer. And I just want to remind Ms. Schaefer, Professor Huber, anyone else, if you run out of time during your testimony, you can submit any comments in writing, and we will distribute them to all the members. Uh, anyone else in support down at the Sawyer Building? If not, broadcasting, if we can go to the phone lines. Anyone in support of Senate Joint Res Resolution 7 of the 81st session? If you would like to testify in support of SJR 7, press star 9 to take your place in the queue. Good afternoon, Chair and the members of the committee. For the record, Gina Bonjovi, B-O-N-G-I-O-V-I, -I, Managing Partner of Bonjovi Law Firm and a member of the Board of Trustees and Government Affairs Committee for the Vegas Chamber. I am also a three-time graduate of the University of Nevada, Las Vegas. The Vegas Chamber, as the state's largest and broadest based business association, is in support of SJR 7. As many of you know, the Chamber has a long history of engaging on higher education matters. We are advocates for reform because workforce development continues to be a serious challenge for our members who are the job creators in our state. The Chamber believes that the passage of SJR 7 is an essential component to reforming the state's higher education governance structure, which is a crucial component of aligning the needs of today's students with the needs of employers. We all recognize the demands on our workforce are quickly changing and we need a governance model that will adapt to meet those challenges and opportunities. We must ensure that our higher education structure is responding to these changes within the workforce. 
to do nothing would be a great disservice to the approximately 100,000 students that are enrolled in NC institutions across the state. Nevada's employers need students who are ready to enter the workforce when they graduate from an institution of higher education in Nevada. Additionally, our economy needs innovation and entrepreneurship through research, which can drive meaningful economic diversification in our state. The Chamber believes that SJR 7 would provide much needed clarity on the roles of the Board of Regents and the state legislature. This resolution would also enact governance reforms that many stakeholders in our state are seeking. We do recognize that there have been recent efforts by NC to align education and improve operations and community engagement. However, for the long-term benefits of both students and employers, we need to reform this higher education governance structure. This is good public policy that is based on sound reasoning, data, and facts. That is why SJR 7 passed with full bipartisan support and no opposition in the Senate in the 2021 legislative session, with 20 yeas, zero nays, with one excuse. We urge this committee to pass SJR 7 again this session so that it can go before the voters in 2024. I would like to thank the chair and members of the committee for the opportunity to speak today. Thank you, Ms. Bon Jovi. Broadcasting anyone else on the phone lines who wishes to speak in support. Chair, we have no more callers willing to testify in support at this time. Thank you. Uh, with that, then we'll go to opposition. Uh, first, we'll come up to Carson City. Is there anyone who wishes to speak in opposition to Senate Joint Resolution 7? Please state your name for the record and proceed. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. My name is Joe Arascata, spelled A-R-R-A-S-C-A-D-A. And I'm currently the vice chair for the Board of Regents of the Nevada System of Higher Education. I want to say thank you all for this opportunity. As this committee is aware, the very issues now presented by SJR 7 were debated and discussed by the legislature for many years, ultimately becoming question one on the 2020 ballot. The Constitution amendments presented by question one sought to change nearly 160 years of Nevada history. The people of Nevada rejected those changes during the 2020 elections. And now, the voice of the people is not being respected. Matter of fact, SGR 7 is recycled question one. New wording, slight changes in semantics, but one, that one item is evident. This new resolution is blatantly questioning the voters' will. To many of your constituents, this do-over is similar to an election denier of the same 2020 cycle. It diminishes the voice of the Nevada voters. SJR 7 does, is not proposing to improve higher education in Nevada. It is not proposing to increase advanced research or, re, re, or workforce development for our communities. Most importantly, it is not proposing to increase any additions to help students. The delivery of instructions, the growth of campuses, or the retentions of top faculty Rather, this measure creates uncertainty, could significantly lower the morale of those working on each campus, and obstruct Nevada system of higher education's immediate and long-term strategic plan. Why destroy the core mission of the regions, of the system? Proponents have argued that the passage of question one back in 2021 would bring forward accountability, transparency, and oversight. I've been on the Board of Regents now for two and a half years, watched multiple years of Regent meetings, was a product of Truckee Meadows Community College, proud graduate, graduate of Nevada, the University of Nevada, Reno twice. I have seen the Board of Regents work and work famously together. And they follow every, and we follow every single open meeting law just as you all do here today. All Regents meetings votes are taken in full view of the public. This do-over is not for the will of the people, it's for, an ins it's for a very specific few individuals that feel that it's necessary to remove the Regents 
and uproot the Nevada Constitution. We are Nevada. We have uniquities. What we have in this state or something that it's nowhere else. It's not in Florida. It's not in the other states that have been described. And, and Regent R. Scott, I'm sorry to interrupt you. We are getting to the two minutes. If you could wrap up your comments. Senator Owenshaw, I just appreciate the time and the moment that we can speak about the board. We're here as one. We're here as un to unite Nevada and to work with the regions of the South. There's not a Mason-Dixon line going through Tonopah. We need to all work together for only one people, the students, but also the faculty and staff. Thank you all for this opportunity. Thank you, Regent Arascata. Anyone else here in Carson City wishes to speak in opposition to Senate Joint Resolution 7 of the 81st session? Okay, not seeing anyone here in Carson City. Down at the Sawyer Building, uh, thank you for your patience. Please state your name for the record and proceed. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Senator Orenshaw, uh, James Dean Levitt, former member of the Board of Regents from 2004 to 2016, chairman from 2009 to 2011. I point out, Chairman, because when I uh, was elected uh, by my colleagues to serve in that capacity, I sent a personalized letter to all 63 members of the legislature, and I asked each one of them if there is anything that I can do during my year of service and then my subsequent uh, re-election one year later to please reach out with me to share your concerns, your hopes, your dreams, your frustrations, so that I can convey those uh, to then Chancellor Claych. Now, I don't say this disrespectfully, but in those two years, there was not one member of the legislature that expressed concerns frustrations, hopes, or dreams. Perhaps all those calls went to Chancellor Claych. I don't know. But when I came on the board in 2004, there was a bill sponsored by Assemblywoman Chris June Kiliani. Several years later, that was defeated. Several years later, we had another bill. That was sponsored by Senator Woodhouse and Assemblyman Elliot Anderson. When we look at trifling with the state constitution, it should require the greatest scrutiny. People say we're the only state with one governance board over all of the inchy. Thank God. I think every state should be governed the same way. Fifteen years ago, we had six members of our Clark County Commission that were indicted, but we didn't see any cry for appointed commissioners. We had a president recently that some weren't too fond of, but we don't see a cry. We talk about the open meeting law, and I have to correct Regent Arascotta. This body chose not to apply the open meeting law to themselves. Why not? Is your work too important? Are you too busy? I think your work is important, and I think you are too busy. So let's have uh, year-long legislative sessions. Let's have full-time legislators. Let's have part-time regents. You want to improve the system? Give Inchi the necessary funding to succeed. The only thing worse than elected regents or appointed ones, and the only thing worse than elected legislators are appointed ones, because they're not accountable to the people. They never will be. They never have been. Governor Lombardo would call this the Nevada way. We have a citizen legislature. I have extreme confidence in those of you here today. Thank you for your service. I have confidence in the assembly where this will go. But the only difference in this bill from the one two years ago was the addition of a mandatory biennial legislative audit. Now, I don't want to say that that's dishonest. Uh, dishonest, it's crafty. The legislature has always, always, always had the authority Mr. Levitt, to audit. And Mr. Levitt, you're at two minutes. It, I'm sorry to interrupt. Yeah, you're I'll, at two I'll minutes. If you could wrap up, up real, your comments. I'll try and wrap it up real quickly. Democracy is messy. There's regents I don't care for. There's assemblymen I don't care for. But that doesn't mean we should change the system. We have elections. And for those few people that are sponsoring this bill, I don't see them running for office. I don't see them making that kind of sacrifice. And Mr. Levitt, we are the we solution, need to wrap up. Yeah, thank you. The solution perhaps is more qualified folks, 
But before we talk about appointing, because that will come next, Senator Orenshaw, if this goes to the people and passes, that's what you'll do next. But Mr. lastly, Mr. Levitt, I, before I you start doing that, you're at the let's, two minutes. Let's look at appointing. Let's look at appointing legislators and some others before we start with the board. Thank you for your service. I appreciate the time. Uh, apologies for going slightly over. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Levitt. Okay. I don't see anyone else in the Sawyer Building in opposition broadcasting. If we could go to the phone lines, anyone who wishes to speak in opposition to SGR seven of the eighty-first session. If you'd like to testify in opposition to SJR 7, press star 9 to take your place in the queue. Good afternoon, Chair Orenshaw and committee. My name is Jim DeGraffenry, D-E-G-R-A-F-F-E-N-R-E-I-D. And I'm Nevada's Republican National Committee man representing the Nevada Republican Party. We are in opposition to SJR 7 of the 2021 session. Because this resolution is a first step to remove the constitutional process of electing the Nevada Board of Regents against the will of Nevada voters as expressed in 2020. The sponsors point out that this resolution makes no changes to the Board of Regents beyond removing its constitutional protections. However, we submit that when there's a move to remove protections is because someone feels that those protections are in the way. And we heard in support testimony earlier that significant changes are desired. SJR 7 is certainly a persistent power grab, having been rejected by voters in the 2020 election and then immediately brought back before the legislature. Outside of Clark County, voters rejected this measure by 64%. In Washoe County, 61% voted against question one. The Board of Regents is currently accountable to Nevada voters. Should the legislature change the system and appoint regents rather than having them elected, the people will lose their oversight ability and be disenfranchised. For anyone that doubts the legislature's desire to infringe on voters' rights, I refer you to just one example from this session, the Sunday Bill 175, which attempts to dilute oversight of the Clark County School Board by creating appointed rather than elected positions. We know the Republicans outvoted Democrats by about 28,000 votes in the 22 election, yet Democrats hold a supermajority in the Assembly and a near supermajority in the Senate due to gerrymandering. This means that hundreds of thousands of rural and conservative voters effectively do not have representation. Mr. DeGraffenried, no please, if you could speak to SJR 7. I know you've talked about some other legislation, other issues, but if you could please speak to the bill. Yes, sir. That's why we voted against this resolution in the form of question one when it was last placed before us just a few years ago in 2020. In this environment, we're strongly opposed to removing constitutional protections for Nevada voters to have meaningful oversight over the border regions. We strongly urge that this committee protects the rights of all Nevada voters and opposes this resolution. Thank you, Mr. DeGraffenried. Broadcasting, is there anyone else on the phone lines who wishes to speak in opposition to SGR 7 of the 81st session? Sure, we have no more callers willing to testify in opposition. Thank you. We'll now go to neutral testimony. Anyone who wishes to be heard speaking neutrally to Senate Joint Resolution 7 of the 81st session here in Carson City? If you wish to speak, please come forward, state your name for the record, and proceed. Kent Irvin, K-E-N-T-E-R-V-I-N, on behalf of the State Board of the Nevada Faculty Alliance. The Nevada Faculty Alliance State Board is neutral on SJR 7. We have members on both sides, although recent events have swayed more of our members towards support. I would like to provide some background. The NFA is affiliated with the American Association of University Professors, which advocates for academic freedom in higher education. We are very concerned about the potential for political and partisan interference in curriculum and academic standards. In the past two years, especially, Academic freedom has been under unprecedented attack by state legislators and governors around the country. Question one in 2020 had a clause regarding academic freedom, but as it was written, it would actually have endangered academic freedom. SJR seven is silent on academic freedom. Last session, we offered an amendment to protect academic freedom, but it gained no traction. Having a constitutional governing board, as in about half of these states, provides some protection for academic freedom, but today we see both elected and appointed boards becoming more and more politicized and they do not necessarily protect the principles that we value. 
we all have a strong interest in having a fully functioning Board of Regents serving the students in Nevada. And she has more often asserted its constitutional authority over personnel issues and its own power structure than in defense of academic freedom or educational policy. Our hope now is that we can protect our principles in the future through collective bargaining. We reserve the right to change our position to support as we hear from more of our members, and we remain willing to work with you to add true protection of academic freedom to the Constitution. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Irvin. Anyone else wants to be heard in the neutral category? Okay, I don't see anyone else out of the Sawyer Building. Broadcasting, if we can go to the phone lines. Anyone who wants to be heard in the neutral position on Senate Joint Resolution 7 of the 81st session. If you'd like to testify in neutral, press star nine to take your place in the queue. Again, if you'd like to testify in neutral, press star nine to take your place in the queue. Chair, we have no one willing to testify in neutral at this time. Thank you, Broadcasting. Senator Don Darrell-Loop, Assemblyman Kasama, any closing comments? We appreciate you being here today to present this uh, proposed constitutional amendment. Thank you, uh, Chair Orenshaw and committee members for uh, hearing this resolution today. And thank you to my um, fellow legislator, Assemblywoman Kasama. And I just like would, would like to reiterate that this is not about elections. As a matter of fact, in the resolution, it calls for elections of Board of Regents. This is uh, simply about taking them out of the Constitution. So with that, I thank you very much and appreciate your time today. Thank you, Senator Don Darrell-Loop. That's correct. Senate Joint Resolution 7 does not speak to not having the regents be elected. So I appreciate you clarifying that. Thank you for your closing comments. Uh, members will now go to public comment. So if there's anyone who wishes to make public comment not related to Senate Joint Resolution 7 or the hearing that we just heard, uh, now's your chance. Here in Carson City, we are limiting public comments to two minutes per speaker. I don't see anyone here in Carson City. Uh, down at the Sawyer Building, I, if anyone wishes to make public comment, uh, I, I don't see Mr. Levitt pressing his microphone on. Uh, uh, Senator, it's a very, very lonely room here. Well, thank you. Thank you for your, your earlier testimony. Thank you, Regent. I enjoyed uh, it. Thanks for the time. Thank you. Broadcasting will now go to the phone lines. Anyone on the phone lines who wishes to make public comment, we are limiting that to two minutes per speaker. Chair, the public line is open and working, but we have no one willing to provide public comment at this time. Thank you very much. And members, I just want to remind you, on Thursday at 4 o'clock, we are having a joint meeting of the Senate Committee on Legislative Operations and Elections with the Assembly Committee on Legislative Operations and Elections. We will be meeting at 4 o'clock in room 4100. So with that, we are adjourned.